Autos and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 2013 Nissan. It's a Murano. It's a big 3.5 liter and it needs some front brakes. And I don't even recall the last time we did a brake job. Well, we do lots of brake jobs this day. But on the channel. I have to see if I remember how to do this, folks. I had to steal one from my guy. Let's see your wheels off, so that's step one. <coughs> step two, we're gonna pull the caliper off here. <coughs> Removing the caliper mounting bolts. In this case, they took a 14 millimeter socket. Pull in on that caliper just a little bit here. And there we go. So our calipers off, knock the rust out of the pistons before we push these in all the way. I'm just going to have a little look at the boots. We want to make sure that the boots around the pistons aren't split. They're nasty. And then we're going to clean off the piston faces with a little whizzy wheel and clean off inside the other side of the caliper here where the pad sits. Get all the rust and the junk out of there and then we'll push it back in. Our pins aren't seized up, so that's good. Uh, what do we need there? Maybe a 21? Maybe not. Probably a 22, Phil. 22 it is. <laughs> 22 wobble socket, Thor, and having your face this close, what could go wrong? Stand back. <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> no casualties. Swivel sockets are danger, danger. I think it'll bust your lip every time. There's that. That's too much. Here we go. Let's see if we can clean those little guys up. Oh boy, Josh is over there having some air hammer and fun. Uh, let's see. Hold up. Yeah, it's not gonna work like that thought. Uh, bear with me here, folks. Switch tools. All right, now the faces are nice and flat and back to bare metal. Now, obviously, that's a really bad idea to do on a on a grinding disc, you know. But it is abrasive. But you start to kind of weaken it, and then if you get it wrong, that flies off and sticks you in the face. So. Do with caution and never do what I show you. Well, that looks pretty good to me. All the big chunks are gone inside there now. Probably just outside your screen where you can't see, but trust me, the big chunks are gone. The big chunks are gone off the face of our pistons. Now one last thing before we shove them back in. I see they've got a lot of junk that's stuck to them. I don't see any uh, holes or slits in them. So we're just gonna scrub those off. Don't use your metal brush though. That's right, baby. Uh, so we're just gonna very gingerly get some of the junk off here. So we're gonna hose this stuff off. Me personally, because somebody's already typing in the comments about not getting brake cleaner on the rubber parts. I've never seen any adverse effects from it. I think it'd be a whole lot worse to stick all the dirt and stuff and shove it back in the piston. So uh, obviously don't do this like this. push the piston back. Uh, we're going to take and clean all the hub and, hub and grease, all the hub and junk off the grease. How about all the grease and junk off the hub? This thing's pretty clean. Must be it's had a brake job before. Do I see somebody had put grease on the hub or something to keep it from getting all rusty? So that's great. That saves us the time from cleaning it off super well, so we'll douche it down with some 
of the good stuff. That's uh, nice and clean, ready to accept the new rotor. <laughs> Keeps me from having to find my sheep sound effect. We're going to give it a little toot right here. And then we've got the new napper. Uh, not sponsor us, new uh, pets. They're silent guard. It replaced their safety stop line. Uh, I think it's the same crap, different box, more marketing. Not positive. You'd have to check with them. We're going to open this baby up right here. They all come with a free bag of chiclets, which is great, but boy, they dry your mouth out like crazy. Look at that. Hang that up on there. Now I'm gonna go find an axle nut. So we just use the axle nuts, old axle nuts to take up space. Usually I got a bunch of them on my left. So there's that. Some people got really concerned because they saw the, the new napper sign that we got on our building. Um, thinking that you know Napa now finally owns us. Uh, however, I have to pay for that sign, folks. What the fuck? Wow, that turns hard. The other side's still all on. Uh, let me get a screwdriver. And that's because we are a Napa Auto Care Center, which we have to pay. You know, obviously we have to pay in to be an auto care center, and there are perks that come with it. However, I am not owned by them. Step two. This car sits a lot. These look like, uh, I think these are advanced auto pads, which I haven't sold in many, many, many years. I don't believe, I assume we did the brake job on it last, but insides of the rotors are pretty well rusted. Get some brake complaints. Before we take and open up this little guy, I'm gonna go sandblast the brackets out here and get it ready for the new hardware and the new pads and then we'll have a look at the pins see what they look like and get them cleaned up let's pull these out wipe some of the old junk off it today's flavor of the day is brought to you by crc ceramic. it's ceramic fortified brake system grease with an extreme range from minus 50 to 3000 so you can ride the crap out of these brakes Three thousand degrees. Wouldn't your rotors be pretty well red at that point? I'm thinking. I'm not a metallurgist. Put a little bit on the lip where this thing seals. Put it on there. Just twirl it around. And give it that seal. And of course, a little bit gets up on the upper lip where it seals against the pin. Seems okay. Beautiful. We'll spread that all around here. Kind of helps slow down the rust the best we can. Let's see. Uh, I gotta go check something now. Make sure I just put my hardware on right. Let's see. Those little guys are on there. Let's get our pads out. They've got your classic blue stripe on them now. That's new with the Silent Guard upgrade. Let's see. We need this one here. And then we need a pad out of the other side. There. And there. We need this one and that one. That's where it gets a little tricky. Because we have our spring retainer, it's going to go inside the anti squeal clip there. Make the anti drag. It'll be a drag, baby. There we go. She's in. They move very loosely, easily. I don't think loosely is a word. Use it if you want. And there's not that one. 
Oh, hardware is pinched down a little there. Come on, baby. Okay. So our pads are installed. Now they should move very easily with your fingers. Why is this one not wanting to move? There we go. So it's just where that one got pinched out a little bit, but it should move very easily. So if you gotta beat them back and forth, you're doing it wrong. Very gingerly try to get this on there without letting it all hit the floor. So we'll line that up on there. Take your bolts that you've already put the lock tight on. Get one of them by it. Get one of them little guys started, I guess is what I was gonna say. Well this is embarrassing. I was gonna get out a torque wrench for you folks. Uh, Nissan service data, dude, I've got every I just called you dude. Every bit of service info on everything. Torque specs on every bolt except for these two caliper brackets. I looked under wheel bearing, remove and replace, hope I'd find it there. Axle shaft, knuckle, brakes obviously, brake disc, brake pads, brake calipers. Every exploded view which Nissan keeps their uh, torque specs on, they don't list it. So guess what? It's getting the German spec, gluten tight. Holy smokes. Trying to be trying to be all impressive for you folks. Let you know that we care. But you now we're back to doing how we always do it. I suppose this is why I don't work for Boeing. Or Airbus for that matter. They get kind of fussy to start jamming stuff down, so I hear. So we're gonna put a little bit of uh, Ceramic, right? Is that what it's called? Ceramic brake caliper grease. Which, if I had another hour or so, I probably could find it, which I probably will at some point, and be like, ah, oh, it was right there in front of my face. Or there's also just a general fastener spec sheet that you can use based on the size and thread pitch of the fastener, your average torque load, I think, that that fastener will take. I don't know if that's all appropriate terminology, but I believe you'd have to ask an engineer, but I think there are specs given, uh, given the grade of the bolts, the thread pitch, the style of thread, and all that stuff, and there is an assumed maximum torque that you can put on it. Now, I don't know if that also takes into account like if the threads, you know, if this is threading into aluminum or if it's threading into steel, uh, that I don't know because I'm just a dumb mechanic. But I have seen charts like that in the past. I'm gonna get that bolt in. Slide that little guy down there. Get that in. And this we do actually have a torque spec on. Make sure you don't mess it up when you're looking at Nissan stuff. So 26.5, and then we gotta look at that symbol means 26.5 newton meters or 20 foot-pounds, or 2.7 kilograms, meters, kilogram meters, perhaps, 20 foot-pounds. I'll get a torque wrench and we'll snug them little babies up. So there we are, folks, and now this should move like that with some freedom back and forth and uh, that's it you know I've junk all over it you just got it you don't want to get the ceramic all over your all over your stuff here if you do get any junk on it you can go through and a little bit of the brake clean you got a little rust up there uh, so that's that we're gonna put a little fluid film on the face of this down don't go hog wild with that you don't want it slinging all over your brakes wow oh. And then we'll uh, put a little on there, we'll lift the wheel on, we'll torque that down, whatever the spec is on that. And then do the brakes on the other side and we'll go for a two around town. Man, it's your cylinder's full. We'll go tell Mrs. O that we're going on a little two around town. It's after five now. What's up, Mrs. O? Ooh, what are you making? Mm -hmm. Looks like shrimp scampi. I'll bear it back, old girl. Mm -hmm. Thanks for dinner, I'm all sleepy. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm usually okay during lunch.
But after dinner, I'm done. That's all she wrote. Pump up your brakes here, folks. It even tells you to pump up your brakes because it knows you just did a brake job. That's a lie. Don't, don't ever believe me. Check tire pressure. All right. Let me uh, get my seatbelt and stuff on. And we'll go around town here. Probably ought to turn our headlights on for safety. Folks, so we made it back. Brakes are smooth. We took a little toot around town, as you've seen. Sped it up there a little bit for you because it's super boring. Uh, brakes are smooth through town. They're smooth out on the big road. Uh, everything is good. Pulled it back in so we can check the ladies' tires here before we give it back. This car does sit a lot. It's only got like 60-some thousand, I think it was, wasn't it? What's it at here? 63,450 to be exact. Uh, and that's it. That's why your brakes get rusty and they seize up and then the rotors turn to crap and so on and so forth so that's it we've been seeing that a lot uh, the past year and a half or so especially with Rona uh, being around people's cars are just sitting all the time now so it seems and so we've been doing an abnormal amount of rusty brake repair or maybe I'm just reading into it too far I don't know anyways what I do want to read is I want to read where you write your comment in that section down below the questions the comments the concerns the insty Facebook. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.